Inflation is raining down on the profit lines of America's biggest grocery stores and by extension, putting downward pressure on their stock prices. Let's talk more about this with UBS senior retail analyst Michael Lasser, who covers the grocery store space. Michael, always great to see uh, you. So when you talk to these management teams, what are they telling you about how they are dealing with inflationary pressures? And there are certain are there certain companies in your coverage that are, are doing a better job of managing this? Well, good morning. Thank you very much for having me, Brian. When we talk to the management teams, what they're telling us is that they're trying to balance the needs of the business with the needs of consumers. And but with that being said, they're passing along price increases at a faster clip than they ever have before because the pressures are are coming from a wide variety of areas, raw material costs, oil, transportation costs. And so this is putting a lot of pressure on the budgets of consumers, particularly at the lower income end of the demographic spectrum. Who stands to benefit from this more than most are those retailers that are well positioned to help consumers save money. That's Costco, Walmart, the dollar stores. Those are all stocks that we would advocate owning at this level because they're well positioned for today and well positioned for the long run as well. And Michael, what we've seen is that it's not even holistically Walmart as much as it is certain bulk categories within Walmart. Sam's Club, i.e., is what we saw in this most recent quarter. You mentioned Costco's. We also naturally think about BJ's as well. In kind of this flight to bulk, what does that tell you more broadly about consumer sentiment at this point in time or even confidence in how far their dollar is going? So consumers have to be more conscious of how, how do, uh, far their dollar is going because the prices of not, uh, essential items like food and energy are rising. In response to that, one of the trends we're seeing is trip consolidation and buying in larger quantities. It doesn't make sense to shop at as many stores, uh, meander to as many retail locations because it, it'll cost the consumer more to do that. And that's helping the likes of uh, uh, Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, and BJ's. At the same time, consumers are showing a proclivity to want to shop closer to home. So that's helping the retailers like Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and Family Dollar, who have convenient locations, but also offer inexpensive goods. And that model looks particularly appealing in this environment. But Michael, uh, on the dollar stores, isn't this just the worst possible scenario for the likes of a Dollar Tree and a Dollar General where they have the inflation in the goods coming onto the shelves, and then they have a consumer base that just doesn't have the income to, to handle those price increases. So, Brian, I would actually think about it a little differently. Um, yes, that core income, that core lower income consumer that, that's typically well served by the dollar stores is facing a lot of pressure and, and has to allocate more of their uh, total spend to these non discretionary items. But at the same time, um, con cohorts of consumers that are not at the lowest end of the spectrum, but you know, are slightly higher than, than, uh, the, than the lowest are also having to trade down to the dollar stores in order to stretch their budgets. You know, Dollar General might offer half a box of Cheerios. Uh, and if, if a consumer can't um, ex extend their budget for a full month and a full box of Cheerios, buy half a box to be able to put food on the table will look that much more appealing. So I think that value convenience spectrum that they offer is highly relevant in this market, both for today and for the longer term as well. We do know that the Biden administration is planning to roll out $2.1 billion to really cater to the supply chain issues within food and in grocery specifically, uh, and that coming in some prepared remarks from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And so with that in mind, when do we believe that that will actually make some sort of a dent in this broader system as well? So I think the, the question of when will inflation start to abate is a, is a big question. It's going to have many different factors that, that play into it. You know, the, um, the consensus is that inflation will start to slow as we lap some of the bigger increases from last year. What's interesting from the retail reporting season is that a lot of the retailers said we have no choice but to continue to raise prices in the back half of the year, for example, Home Depot. Uh, said that they expect uh, prices to rise at a double digit rate in the back half of the year. Walmart had indicated that it expects prices to continue to rise. 
And, and so despite lapping some pretty significant base effects from the prior year, based on the commentary of these retailers, it would seem to suggest that inflation and inflationary pressures are gonna be here for at least the near term in some categories that are core to, to the consumer. So it's best to be mindful of this uh, as you look out for at least the, the near term. Michael, now you've covered Costco for a while. Uh, do you think they're making a mistake by one, uh, holding a line with not raising membership fees and in this inflationary environment, how they how can they continue to sell one fifty one dollar and fifty cent hot dogs with inflation where they where it is today? Costco is a fantastic retailer. They've executed against this um, strategy for a long time, so we have confidence that they continue can continue to balance the needs of their customers and the needs of their shareholders. As far as the the fee increase. Our belief is that it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And given that Costco generates about half of its operating income from its membership fees, this is an important conversation. But a, but a, a shift back for raising its fees by six months is not going to have that dramatic of an impact on the, the share price. And if anything, raising the fees will provide a pool of savings that Costco can use to reinvest uh, reinvest back into lower prices for its customers. As far as the hot dog, it's quite tasty. It's a great deal. And we expect that Costco will continue to only charge a dog. So true. Big fans. We're big fans of it here on the desk, Michael. Big fans. I, I think the big question is, you guys. what's better, though, the Ikea meatballs or the Costco hot dog? Uh, Costco hot dog and the rotisserie chicken. That's a debate I'm not going to get into. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's smart, Michael. That's smart. Michael Lasser, UBS Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst. Thanks so much for taking the time.